So we have a scale blank, and I'm going to clean it up with acetone. It has some marking, uh, dichem and so forth on it. And uh, we want to make sure there's no dirt, oil, anything else that's going to interfere with the other things we got to do, the next steps in the process. So we'll clean it up here and let it dry off. Here we've got a polyethylene container in our blank, and we're going to treat it with a, a dilute solution of hydrofluoric acid. Uh, this is just nasty stuff, so you really want to read up carefully on how to use it safely. And here we have a neutralizing solution. And um, it does a great... The reason we like titanium so much is just its incredible, incredible toughness. Uh, that comes as a result of a lot of factors, but on the surface we have a layer of titanium oxides that um, creates problems for even anodization and some other things. So what the hydrofluoric acid does is do a micro etching of the surface, which then makes further anodization steps really crisp and even. Um, and sort of, you might have seen a lot of examples of anodization where it's dulled, or like in my Diet Coke video, where it's sort of washed out. A lot of that happens because we didn't properly prep and clean the surface. In this case, the uh, micro etching from the hydrofluoric acid will do a good job of getting through that layer to the bare metal, uh, or at least reducing down to, to an even layer of the bare metal and let us anodize uh, as cleanly as possible. I've got full protection here, chemical gloves, glasses. I'm doing this outside so there's good ventilation. So those are all, those are all precautions you're going to want to take when working with uh, this stuff. I, I didn't list the brand name here. You can look it up. It's a household hem chemical you can buy. This is about a 3% solution um, sold as a rust remover. And uh, we'll go ahead and apply it here, let it sit for... Um, I think usually a few minutes is all it takes. Okay, we got that. Now this is stuff that uh, you can't put down the drain. Um, also, you cannot use with glass because this will actually etch the glass. And uh, I'm using the shallow container so that we get, you can see it eating away pretty readily at the titanium. It's fuming. There we go. work with a cap here. These are not fumes you want to breathe in. Give another a little bit. Now we'll go ahead and uh, remove our piece. Put it in our neutralizing solution. Neutralize our gloves here. Okay. And we're good. And now we'll leave that in the neutralizing solution so that it's not exposed to the oxygen in the air. And, and prevent it from immediately reforming the oxides until we're ready to do our next anodization steps. We're at the anodizing setup, and I just ran a quick test piece that shows off a couple interesting things. This is going to be the base color under the litho lithographic mask, and this is on the mill finish side where the titanium has just been etched by the hydrofluoric acid. You can see it sort of has an overall dullness and a couple imperfections. Those aren't from fingerprints or anything like that. That's just the mill finish off the raw titanium. This other side, I just did a quick uh, thousand grit um, sort of buff touch-up sanding. Just so you can see the grain in the material and so forth. And so surface finish is crucial to good anodizing. You need to get down to the, the bare smooth metal with a thousand grit or greater finish. Uh, I guess, you know, you can do orange peel, satin, other things, but you want to get to that base first and then work from there. Um, you can see this really nice cerulean blue, and then we're going to try and contact, contrast this with a gold. Um, it's, it's just interesting to see the matteness of it. That's a reflection of matte of the metal versus the 1000 uh, grit where you have that polish and shine, <clears throat> but you're also seeing all the imperfections in the underlying mill finish of the metal. Um, so here, We've got our piece that we uh, cleaned up earlier, just in distilled water. I'll bring that over. 
And um, there's a lot of different ways. I have another wire set up. It just kind of obscures seeing things. So I'm using this big plate of titanium as the cathode. Let me get our multimeter connected here. And then for the electrolyte solution, oops, all I'm using is sodium carbonate. Uh, it's a 5% solution. I'm not really sure the, the concentration matters at all. And of course, you don't want these to, to touch. Uh, okay, so I think we're all set there. And we'll fire away. You can see we're jumping up to, should be right about 20 volts. Um, the voltage will change as the coating forms. And we'll give it, uh, I'm going to let this go for a couple of minutes just so we get as even a finish as possible. All right, our time uh, has elapsed here. I'm going to shut this down, wait for our electricity to discharge, get down to zero volts. There we go. We'll take it out. Ooh, yeah. And uh, there are some smudges and things. There's the side that I cleaned real well. So we got a nice even. There we go in the sunshine. Nice even coating. Um, that's a good example of how the finish is affected by the the pre-cleaning. So there's our side that was cleaned pretty well, drying off. You can see the, the rich color come out as the water evaporates. Goes from a purple to a, a real true blue. And then here's the side that wasn't cleaned uh, as carefully. There's some smudging and various things like that. Uh, but that came out pretty good for our test sample here. Um, I'm going to leave it to dry out completely. And then we'll get the mask set up. We are uh, applying the mask. It's a light sensitive mask and so any light will trigger it so I need to do this in dark room type condition. Now the piece is all sealed up in foil to block out the light and I'm going to take it upstairs and get it baked like the rest of the Commonwealth this week. Here's what our exposure pattern looks like. So where the light areas are it will uh, harden the mask and where the dark areas are that'll be washed away and let us anodize that pattern in. That'll be the gold on blue. Here's the actual projection. Make sure we get the right side up. Yeah. All right. So we'll leave it there for about a half hour. Um, it's really hard to see the pattern show through on the camera, but it's there. Here is the, uh, the piece. I did some testing with some of the solvent earlier to make sure things worked and I can kind of see the pattern on this so with any luck this should be a little bit of a magical process here and there it is yeah that's cool so we're wiping away the uh, unset resin looks like we didn't get great set on some of it. It's washing away a little too aggressively. But suitable for our test here. Now I can use a little regular water. Um, a lot of the lines are pretty crisp. It looks like on the edge here our exposure wasn't that good. But this will work for our testing purposes. Mostly I want to see if this mask can resist uh, the anodizing process. And I'm pretty sure it should, but we'll see. This mask, unlike a lot of others, um, doesn't develop in uh, doesn't develop in a base solution. It develops via uh, ethanol or, or solvents in ethanol. Okay, so we'll let this dry. There you go. You can see 
the lighting in this bathroom isn't that great. Definitely carried over. Now we'll throw it in the anodizer again, see if we can get that gold on blue. So we've got our power. We're going to raise it up to a higher level than the blue that we had before. But the masked areas, hopefully, won't be affected. So we're going for a blue on yellow here. Yellow comes into the 50s. You can see a little bit of bubbling. It does look like a little bit of the uh, mask has come free. For 57, so I'll turn the power off. We'll get our first look. Okay, we are clear. Let's take a look. Oh yeah. Look at that. Not bad. Pretty golden. Um, you can see in some spots there's a little bit of more bronze to it. That's where some of our cleaning and things were uneven. This is a test piece, so I wasn't worried about that too much. Now, I think I'm going to leave that as is. And we're going to clean off the mask. And it should still be blue under there. Not a roaring success, but it does prove a couple things, and that's the purpose of an experiment. So, though this looks like paint, it is not. It is actually anodization. Uh, there's no, no texture there at all. And you can kind of see the outline of the Boston Blade Company. Um, so, lessons learned here. One of the mistakes, or I don't even know it was a mistake, but one of the choices I made in this particular test is that I brushed on the mask. I didn't really want to set up a spin coat or anything more elaborate just because I want to see if it works. And I, in doing so, it made part of the mask a lot thinner. And so where the mask was very thin, it seems like the anodization uh, sort of went through it versus this corner where I think I started brushing, it was extra thick. And so that uh, masked quite well. And you can kind of see the brush strokes through a lot of it, especially in here. Uh, so next time I need to make sure that I, I double or triple coat it. Um, spin coating is kind of a headache. And the purpose is, I, this is a flat piece, but the purpose of this experiment was uh, a couple things. This was a high voltage yellow after a lower voltage blue. So there's a lot of tricks you can do with anodization where uh, you anodize in one color and then you might sand off a surface and then anodize another, but you always have to do lower after higher voltage. Uh, and that kind of limits some of your, your color choices and how you do masking and things. This test does prove that you can in fact do higher after lower, but you gotta make sure that mass thickness is there. Um, the other thing is that the Hanova scales that I want to do this lithography onto are contoured, so they're not flat. And so using things like traditional PCB, dry film, um, and some other techniques don't work because of those three-dimensional surfaces. Um, and also spin coating becomes a real headache when you're doing a three-dimensional surface like that with dips and pools and things. So you might have to hang it upside down or so forth. Uh, so definitely learned a lot from this particular experiment. And uh, the gold and blue does just look cool. So I'm pretty pleased with that. And sort of interesting results here where the anodization went partly through. Um, I cleaned this off camera because the cleaning process uses uh, methylene chloride. I had to do it outside. It's pretty nasty stuff. Toluene, methanol, all, all the goodies in, in soup. Um, so we're going to call this partial success. I'll be back with this technique again in the future, but uh, came out came out learning a lot of things, and, and the proof of concept is here. Um, need to need to kind of streamline the process somewhat. So that's that. I'll see you soon.